Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Roadmaster base plate on a 2021 Jeep Wrangler. So this is what the base plate is going to look like installed and actually hooked up in its flat toe setup. So you can see that it's pretty nice and spaced out here, allowing everything to kind of have some space to work around and actually attach. Our safety chain loops are nice and far enough away, but easy to actually clasp onto. And all of our connections with this included bracket are really nice um, because it puts it at a nice even spot in the middle using factory hole locations. Now when not in use, we can go ahead, drop this out, and then you can actually remove these arms just by pulling this, twisting, and then they come out, giving you a more OEM appearance. And that's the great thing about the base plate on these Wranglers is the fact that it does kind of give it a tough appearance. It hides well under the bumper as well. So when you're not flat towing your vehicle, it's not unsightly. Now the base plate is going to be one of five main components required for flat towing a vehicle. So the base plate is actually attached to the frame of the vehicle, allowing you to make that connection point to the tow bar. Well, the tow bar is going to be the connection point between your base plate and the hitch of the RV. Moving along, we have our safety chains here, and that's just going to make sure that we actually have a, another connection just in case this was to fail. So this is just an added protection, and this just links up to the holes on our safety chain loops on the base plate to the ones on the hitch of the RV. Now, you also will need a supplemental uh, proportional braking system. And what that's going to do is when you put the brakes on your RV, it's going to send a braking signal to the vehicle and it's going to allow this vehicle to slow and stop, uh, not only making it safer for you while driving, but also it's going to help stop as you are. This is going to be dragging a little bit behind with those brakes and slowing down the RV. With that, there's also a breakaway switch. So in case our safety chains and our base plate or tow bar fail, this will actually pull this cable, putting the brakes on. And that way you don't have a vehicle rolling down the highway. Now you have your diode wiring here as well, and that's gonna send signals from our electrical connection on the RV to the vehicle. And it's gonna allow this to actually use the light signals from the RV. So when you put your turn signals on, your running lights and brake lights, it's actually gonna show up on the vehicle. So that's gonna let people know when you're actually uh, signaling or stopping, keeping you safe and legal. Now, when you are ready to use your base plate, it's gonna be pretty simple to attach them. Now these arms are going to be uh, specific to Roadmaster. Now if you need to change them out, if you have a different brand uh, tow bar, there's actually adapters available to make sure that you're still able to hook up. So pretty easy here. It's gonna just kind of slide out. We'll run our pin in, make sure that we're aligned here. Put our pin in here, clasp that down. Now we can do the other side. So now we just need to hook up our remaining connections. So our safety chain loops here. Go ahead and take our breakaway cable. And this is just gonna kind of route to where we have uh, attached our safety chain loops on our safety hooks there. And then we can take our diode wiring and get this plugged in. So now we're ready to put our vehicle in flat tow mode and hit the road. We're going to begin our installation on the passenger side and we're going to just disconnect the harness that has the fog lamps since we will be removing the bumper. Um, that way we're not going to pull that wire along with us. So it's pretty easy to do as the plug sits right here on the frame rail. So you'll just push on the tab and separate these. So while pushing on this tab, you're going to see that it's going to separate here so you can pull on this end and get this separated out. Next, we're gonna go up to our drip tray that's gonna be on top here in between the bumper and the front of the vehicle. And then you're gonna see two plastic push pins. So you're gonna to want to pry those up. Sometimes it helps. You can actually kind of rotate these to where you can get the slot lined up. And then with a small flat head, just pry up on that center one. Sometimes a twisty motion helps kind of separate it, um, working around those edges. Once you get that top portion up, it helps to actually have a, a trim panel tool here and you can kind of pry these up and then once you have that center portion up, the whole thing should come out fairly easy. You may have to pry on the bottom as well. But once you have that out, 
Well, we'll go ahead and get this one off as well. Now, throughout this whole process, it's really important to make sure that you keep all your hardware in a nice organized spot. That way, when you go to reinstall, you'll have it all there. So now we're gonna to need to grab an eight millimeter socket and there's gonna be two screws underneath here in this recessed portion. So we'll go ahead and get those removed. So now underneath where the rock guard actually meets the bumper, you're going to see these plastic fasteners. Now they're tucked in these holes here, but there should be a total of eight. And the way you're going to get those removed, again, a panel, a trim panel tool is going to be really helpful here to just pry it. Um, and then they should pop out. Um, a flathead screwdriver will also work pretty well, but you'll see this portion comes out. Make sure that you get that bottom portion as well and keep these all together. Now, if these do break while removing them, that's not typical, but uh, they can, over time, kind of get brittle. So don't be alarmed if that happens. Generally, you can pick up some extra ones at an auto parts store. So with all of those removed, our rock guard should pop out pretty easy. So we can go ahead and we can set this aside. So now you're gonna wanna grab a 16 millimeter socket and we're gonna be taking off this frame guard here. Now it is hung in place here. It's got these tabs, so it shouldn't drop off. Um, you can go ahead and remove these first. And then this should just lift out of place. Go ahead and set this aside. So now you're going to want to grab that frame guard. And I'm using painter's tape just to kind of make it a little bit easier to have a line to follow. Um, but looking at the instruction manual, it seems like they just follow this line. There's a little triangle piece here. So just kind of staying in here. And what we're doing is we're going to retain both sides of these. That way, when we bolt this back up, that underbody panel will have this tab to actually mount back up into. The rest of this section will not be used. So let's go ahead. We'll get this cut. We'll file it down, make it nice and clean so there's no burrs. And then uh, we can re reinstall this. So this is what our piece is going to look like on one side. We're going to go ahead and take a file, kind of get these burrs off. I'm also going to take a little bit of spray paint on these raw edges and just kind of coat that, whether it be clear or black, whatever you have handy. That way it's going to protect those raw edges from becoming rusted out over time. So now we're going to be taking our freshly cut pieces here and the supplied bolt in the hardware kit. You're going to want this. Um, do not reuse the factory ones but we'll get this in place. And we'll go ahead and get the other one up as well. Now this is gonna allow us to retain that factory rock guard underneath. So I'm actually gonna leave mine a little bit loose because once we actually go back to put it in place, we may have to move it a little bit to align those holes up. So now we're gonna be taking an 18 millimeter socket and we're gonna be removing the nuts that hold the bumper onto the actual frame. So there's gonna be two here, two on this side, making for a total of four. So now with those nuts taken off, we should be able to take our bumper out by sliding the studs out of the holes here. Now we can go ahead and set this aside. So now we're going to need to take a 16 millimeter socket and we're going to take these frame stiffeners off. So if you loosen these up enough, uh, these actually kind of slide out, but just go ahead and remove them as we're not going to need these anymore. Now there's going to be three more, so go ahead, get those taken out. So now you're going to want to grab your actual base plate here and we're going to mount this up just to kind of get an eye of where we need to actually enlarge holes or even if we do at all. Now to pick the right side, you're going to want your safety chain loop facing towards the middle of the vehicle. And to get these on, you're just going to kind of slide this up. You may have to kind of put it at an angle and then that's going to put it to where it's going to sit here. Now what you're going to be looking for is with these holes aligned, this is gonna use the factory bolt, so that's no problem. We'll be able to hold that in place, but we're gonna pass a large bolt through this one, and looking at that, that hole needs to be enlarged. So we're gonna be drilling that out, and looking at this one, that one should be okay. Here on the outside, you're gonna see that this one will 
it, I don't think we'll need to enlarge it. The best way to check is you're gonna wanna grab your supplied bolts and test fit them. But I know for a fact we're gonna have to enlarge this one. So what I'm gonna do is grab my bolt as a reference and I'm gonna just drill this out using a step bit um, and that way it'll stay nice and straight and we'll test fit the bolt through, making sure that it has clearance. That's pretty close here. You want this to be able to pass through and then you're actually gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. And using a step bit's nice because you'll be able to go directly in that smaller hole and widen it out. If you don't have a step bit, uh, you can still use a large drill bit. Just make sure that it is straight across. So work on the first hole and make sure the tip of that drill bit is actually gonna sit right at that other hole. That way it's nice and square. So now once your bolt can pass all the way through, we're gonna go ahead and put our base plate back up and we're gonna be using the existing hardware that we pulled off and those are gonna tighten them into these weld nuts on both sides. So let's go ahead, we'll grab our base plate, put it up in place with those factory bolts and then we're gonna to need to grab some spacers as well. Now putting it in place, I see there's a little bit of play here and that's kind of to be expected due to the manufacturer uh, Jeep having slightly different variances. So what we're gonna be doing is actually taking some of our flat spacers and putting them in between. Now this top one here is gonna get the larger pipe spacer, so we don't have to worry about that. But these other ones, since we're gonna be putting a washer on both sides, we're gonna need to repeat that for the other holes. So let's go ahead, get those in place, and then we can actually thread this in. So to make this a little bit easier to keep these in place, as it is kind of tricky to slide these in, I'm just gonna tape our uh, washers in place, poke our hole through, make sure it's aligned, and that way it's gonna hold in place as we slide this in, allowing us to put our hardware in without having to try to balance those washers as we do it. So what I'm gonna do here to make it a little bit easier is I'm gonna take my factory bolt and I'm gonna just put it in on the other side. That way it's gonna hold our base plate up. That's gonna allow us to be able to slide our washer down. I'm just gonna be ready with the factory bolt here. You can slide that over and then kind of raise this in place to allow us to get that tightened down. So now we're gonna to need to feed the washers in these. It's gonna be a little bit tricky here, but you can wobble them side to side in order to get them in place. So let's go ahead, we'll get these ones on first with our washers, then we can go ahead, we'll get our top ones in place, and then we can work on our bottom ones. So our top bolt here, we're gonna make sure that we have a flat washer on the actual bolt head here. And what I'm gonna do is take our thin pipe spacer, and we're gonna feed this in place as we pass the bolt through. Now this is gonna go on both sides, so once you feed through on this one, um, you're gonna want to, those threads to be kind of right at that edge and then you can take this spacer here and then slide it all through. Again, you may have to lift your base plate to kind of get it all aligned. But once we have that passed through, we'll follow this up with a flat washer, a split washer, and then our nut. So now we're gonna need to grab another long bolt and uh, this one's gonna get a little tricky here trying to get our spacer or our washer in place. So you may need to kind of wiggle it around. Um, but we're gonna go ahead, get this fed in. And I might need to use a flat head or something to kind of push this along to align this. So I'm just using a small pick here to kind of push this along to get it aligned to our hole. Uh, this may take a little bit of patience here, but once we kind of get it there, we should be able to work it up, maybe using a flat head to pry that to the hole. And then once we have that washer aligned, we can feed our bolt through. We're gonna need to put another washer on the other side as well. Pass our bolt through here, and then I'll get my washer in place on this side. And due to manufacturer variances, as we said earlier, I cannot actually get this washer in place, and I think taping it down, it's gonna to be too tight. So if that's the case, you're really just trying to fill the voids. That way, there's not a whole bunch of open space and it bends in when tightening it. So this one seems to be plenty good. What we're gonna do is put our flat washer there, follow it up with the split washer, and then our nut. Now, if you remember earlier, we kept this portion that we cut out loose, and that's gonna be really helpful here because I can actually move this out of the way. And what we're gonna be doing is taking this weld plate here, and this has threads on it. So what we're gonna be doing is feeding this up into the actual uh, frame rail there, and you can see where that's at. So we'll take our bolt, 
with a split washer, a flat washer, and we'll thread this in. Now I do have a gap here, so I'm gonna feed a washer in as well, and then we'll get this hand tightened on there. Now it's imperative that you make sure that the flat portion is against the frame rail, um, otherwise it's gonna be really tough to tighten. And sometimes it's a little tricky to actually get this aligned. So if you need to make a little bend to square it up once you feed it in, by all means, go ahead and do that. Now we're just gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side. So now we have all of our hardware hand tightened in and I've done this same base plate on another Jeep before and I found that once you actually slide the bumper on, that's when they want you to tighten these down and it makes for a really, really small tricky spot to get these tightened down and especially with the torque wrench, it's really tricky to get to. So I think this will save us some time here and a little bit of headache, but the main thing is we want this base plate to align with the bumper holes. That way those studs can slide in here. So what I'm gonna do is actually grab some similar size bolts and just kind of put those as placeholders. And that's just gonna make sure that it doesn't twist and kind of misalign itself as we tighten. But I think at this point we can go back, tighten these down, and then we'll go back with our torque wrench and get those torqued up. And then we should still be able to align our bumper with no problems. So when torquing with your torque wrench, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you tighten it down on the nut side if possible. It's gonna make sure that it's a little bit more snug and sometimes if you tighten on the other end, it can actually cause them to not be as tight as you think. So I'm gonna start with these larger ones up top. I have my 19 on the other side just to kind of keep it from spinning around. So we'll knock out the long bolts and then the bottom one where we had the weld nut bracket in place, that one you're actually gonna to torque it down and then once it's actually torqued down, those little arms that were welded onto it, we can actually get them out of the way. Um, also in the instructions, they say to bend them or break them out of the way. That makes for a tricky time as sometimes they can actually spin around. So uh, hopefully these tilt tips help you get yours installed a little bit easier. Um, but again, we're just gonna make sure these are torqued down properly. And now, if you don't have a torque wrench, we actually have them here at E-Trailer, um, or you could rent them at an auto parts store. But uh, that's gonna be an important step just to make sure that we're not putting too much stress on the threads, but also it's not gonna be loose over time. Now this bottom one here, I still have this attached and, and that's gonna hold that in place and allow it to not spin around. Um, now once you kind of do get it really tightened down, it's possible this will break off, but if not, we'll get it torqued down and we'll just bend that off. There we go. So now with this, you can kind of just Wiggle this back and forth and then that weld should break. Just like that. Now ours is a sport model. There's a lot of different variances based on the different trim levels of the Jeep. In the instruction manual, they'll designate some of the different steps. Ours being a sport, yours may be similar to this and you might not have the trim, but if you do, you wanna to refer to the instruction manual to figure out where to trim. So again, this little tab, we're gonna need to slide right here is gonna be tight. So just kind of work that in first. And then I always check back on this backside to see the studs and the holes. So make sure those studs are sliding through those holes. And uh, you may need to kind of just wiggle back and forth to kind of get them to uh, slide through. But once you get to a nice spot, put a little bit of pressure on it and it should drop into place. So the last little shove was able to get that in place. So if it is catching on the bottom, it's gonna be right here. So just kind of work your way over that. Um, it may get a little bit tricky, but as you can see, we have our studs in place. No trimming was required. So it did work out properly. So now we're gonna go back with those factory nuts we took off from those studs and we're gonna go ahead and just get all of them hand tightened on and then we'll go back and tighten those down. Two, 
install our rock guard, we're going to actually have to trim it. Um, and based on your sub model, again, you're going to need to want to double check that to get the proper measurements. And uh, these are ones that were in the instruction manual. Again, I just kind of taped it off to make it a little bit easier to see. But uh, you may have to do some final trimming. So go ahead, trim that out. And you can always trim a little bit more to get it to fit properly. But this is a general idea of what it's going to look like. So we'll go ahead. Let's get this chopped up. With that cut out, I'm gonna go back with the file, make sure all our flashing is actually trimmed up. And then I'm gonna also kind of test fit, te test fit this up onto our base plate just to make sure we have enough clearance. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other side as well. And then we can make some final trimmings if we need to. So I've gone ahead and test fit mine up there and it looks like it's gonna clear pretty well. So I'm gonna just go ahead, clean up all my lines here so it looks nice and uh, OEM looking and then we'll kind of get this mounted back up so go ahead make sure yours are filed down as well uh, because this is going to be the finished product on your vehicle you want to take your time on this so as we put this in place these are still loose um, we're still able to get to the head of the bolt to tighten them down but what we're going to want to do is kind of put this in place and try to get those holes aligned So making sure these kind of line up and then what we can do is hold those in place, make sure they're both aligned properly and then slowly drop this out. Try not to make contact and what we'll do is go back and tighten those up. You can actually get to the bolt that's in there. Um, so holding it in place here, I'll go back, tighten this up. That way these are going to be aligned with our rock panel. So I know these are aligned now and normally this is when you'd put these back up and you'll put those, those plastic push pins back in place and that would be it. But if you are doing more on your flat toe setup as far as setting up your electrical and you're going to need to run it to the front, I suggest leaving this off. It's going to make it a lot easier because you're going to be running a lot of wires through here. So having that extra space is going to make it a lot more simple. Now, something also that's really nice about this kit is going to be this bracket. And this actually aligns up with some of these holes here. So that's another thing um, that we're going to want to plan out is actually getting this mounted up. And we are going to have to pass some wires through here. So again, getting this in a good spot, you may end up having to trim this to run your wires through later on. But again, this will be a step that I highly encourage you to do after you run the rest of your electrical. Now, something you're going to want to do is make sure that you plug your fog lamps back in. That way we don't forget until later. Also make sure that you put your plastic push pins back in this top portion. Now with all of our connections made, the only thing really left to do is get our rock guard in place. And what's really nice is the bracket and spacers that come in this kit actually align up to where these factory screws are. And I just went ahead and I drilled those out a little bit in order to run our bolts through. But once it's in place, it puts it at a nice even line here. It's going to make it easy to get our rock guard on. So let's go ahead. I did end up trimming a little notch here to run our wires through. But once it's tucked up here, you'll see that's really hard to actually see it from the front of the vehicle. So it's going to look really clean. Let's just run this under. Make sure that we get our tab. There's a center tab aligned or a little pin here that should slide up into the hole. Just make sure all your plastic's under there. And then your plastic push pins are going to align with the holes as well. So we'll go ahead and get our little screws in place here. Now that bracket, you may need to kind of move it around just a little bit um, because it's not all one piece anymore. It's possible that it's moved around even with us aligning those. So I'm going to just put these in place to kind of hold this up while we put our plastic push pins up. Now these plastic push pins are a little tricky to get into place without them wanting to lock. So I'm actually using my trim panel tool to push in the bottom portion first to make sure that it's seated. And then I can actually push the rest of it in and that should pop it in. Now with all of our connections made and our rock guard back on, all that's left to do is make all of our connections to our V, get our vehicle in tow mode, and then start flat towing. And that was a look and installation of the Roadmaster base plate on a 2021 Jeep Wrangler.